It's Sunday and I've got a little surprise for you. A video from the archives that I've redone for 2024. Let's dive into it. The 70s was one of the first decades that saw teen heartthrobs. They burst onto the scene with unrelenting force to millions of adoring fans. Here are my top picks for hunks from the 70s that made guys realize they were gay. Rex Smith is perhaps best known as a late 70s, early 80s spin-up idol who recorded several albums for Columbia Records, including the album Sooner or Later. The album included the hit single Take My Breath Away and that is exactly what he did to many of his fans. He was regularly featured in Teen Beat magazine, ensuring that he was a pin-up hunk on the wall of every gay teen's bedroom. If you didn't know this by now, Smith was also the first actor to play Marvel Comics character Matt Murdock Daredevil in the 1989 The Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Willie Ames was another heartthrob from the late 70s right through the 1980s. He was best known for starring as Tommy in the hit TV series It Is Enough, which ran for five seasons between 1977 and 1981. Teen Beat magazine often featured articles and photos of him, ensuring that his popularity as a teen hunk was carried over into the 1980s. He is fondly remembered by gay fans for appearing in the 1981 movie Paradise, which is basically a ripoff of the Blue Lagoon movie, but fans didn't care as long as they saw some skin. Did you know that during his 8 is enough years, he formed the rock band Willie Ames in Paradise? His band made several appearances on 8 is enough throughout its run. Did you know I have a second channel? That's right, my second channel consists of original content, as well as me exploring the area that I live in, as well as some dad jokes. Ever wondered why golfers carry two pairs of pants? It's in case they get a hole in one. So what are you waiting for? Go on, check out my second channel. A link to that channel is in the description of this video. The TV series Happy Days is synonymous with the teen idol Scott Bayo, and for good reason. He was just 17 years old when he made his debut on the series back in 1977. He went on to star in various TV shows and movies which cemented his place in pop culture as a teen hunk. Gay fans loved the fact that he was shirtless most of the time. Did you know in 2005 he was ranked as number 16 in TV Guide's list of TV's 25 greatest teen idols and number 18 on VH1's 100 greatest teen stars? Despite the controversy due to allegations that recently came to light, did you have a crush on Scott Bayo back in the day? Let me know in the comments. I promise I won't judge you. At the beginning of his career, Jimmy McNichols' popularity quickly grew, causing networks like CBS to create multiple television series, specifically with him in mind as a leading star. By the mid-80s, Jimmy became a household name. It seemed you couldn't turn on a TV without seeing him. Luckily, he was cute as well as talented, so viewers didn't mind the abundance of shows featuring him. If you didn't know this by now, his popularity ensured that he starred in over 50 commercials, and he was the second highest paid actor while starring in the 1979 limited series California Fever. Robbie Benson rose to prominence as a teen idol in the late 1970s by appearing in a sports movie One on One, released in 1977, and Ice Castles, released in 1978. He was also known for his boyish good looks and charming personality, which made him a heartthrob among teenage girls and even gay guys. But Benson's talents didn't stop at acting. He was also a talented singer and songwriter. His music was well received by fans, and he even had a hit single with the song White Hot. Unfortunately, his popularity declined at the end of the 80s, and he struggled to keep his acting career alive during the 90s. Not even his music could save this once popular actor and singer from the unforeseen dive his career took. A sad reality check about being a teen idol. Well, I was born in Dallas, Texas, but I grew up in New York City. Believe it or not, Robbie Benson was the thunderous voice of Beast in the 1991 Disney movie Beauty and the Beast. Kid doing a lot of looping and commercials and, and uh, I was really excited to get a shot at this. The filmmakers had found the sympathetic voice to reveal Beast's inner conflict. It would give me great pleasure if you would join me for dinner. <laughs> he was nominated five times for Worst Actor at the Razzies and won three times. Not that it should be held as winning. Do you remember Robbie Benson? Let me know in the comments. 
Leith Garrett worked as a child actor who became famous as a teen idol in music during the 1970s. At the end of 1976, Garrett signed a five-album record contract with Atlantic Records. Despite his music proving quite successful, he mostly stopped recording music in the early 1980s and concentrated on acting for the rest of the decade, starring in movies like The Outsiders, Cheerleading Camp and Thunder Alley, making a return to music in 2003 after 22 years with the album F8. I turned down a scholarship for this chance. I get kicked out of a cheap motel, I'm broke, and on top of that my goal is a runaway. Later he claimed that producers did not want him to make music aimed at adult audiences when he reached his early 20s, and that it was the main reason why he quit music. In 1979 he became the youngest performer in history to have his own network variety show, entitled Leaf. Sean Cassidy released his self-titled debut album while still in high school. The album catapulted him into stardom almost overnight. He was cute as hell with a killer smile and he could sing. No wonder he became a superstar. He released two albums in 1977, both albums reaching platinum status in the US. And when things couldn't get any better, he got a starring role in one of the biggest TV shows of his generation. Millions of fans, gay and straight, tuned in each week to watch The Hardy Boys Adventures. Did you watch The Hardy Boys? Did you have a crush on Sean Cassidy? Or did you prefer Parker Stevenson? Let me know in the comments which one of The Hardy Boys kept you glued to your TV screen. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing the original version of this video, a link will pop up on your screen. You can also check out some of the other amazing videos on my channel. And if you have time, check out my second channel.